The Brewers are off on Thursday, but they begin a weekend series against the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And we're pleased to be joined by Brewers reliever Hobie Milner, who joins us here on MLB Central. All right, how is your team feeling? You got a division lead, but you know you got those Cubs right in your rearview mirror. How do you feel where the team is right now at this moment here in these last few games? I feel like we're in a good spot. I mean, we had a, a tough couple games against Pittsburgh, but uh, we just came off a really good win streak. And, you know, our offense is kind of showing up. And once our offense starts hitting, then we're kind of a dangerous team. We were talking in the break right before we came on. We were showing that little sidearm. And I said, we always like that. Take me through the story. 2015 was that you kind of said you plateaued in double A as a conventional starter. Does a coach pull you in the, in the room and say, hey? Yeah, basically, um, I, I had some like okay numbers, kind of average numbers. And I guess they were considering considering sending me down. Um, I I fielded a ball in PFP through its sidearm, which I had done my whole life <laughs> through its sidearm. And our pitching coordinator Rafael Chavez was like, "I think you should do that off the mound because it looks it just looks so much better than your than your actual mechanics." Isn't that crazy that just one moment changed your career, right? And I mean, oh, first yeah. bullpen just like that. How'd that feel? The first bullpen was kind of iffy. Uh, honestly, it took me several months playing in Puerto Rico, um, and actually, Rafael Chavez was my pitching coach in Puerto Rico. Where in Puerto Rico? Mayaguez. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so I, I was working on mechanics there, and um, I got to watch Alex Claudio a little bit on that team. Ooh, and he's good. Yeah, he was, he was kind of the first guy I saw I doing it. And uh, so, yeah, I came back to the States and um, – Kind of mastered mastered throwing sidearm that year. Got big league rule five the next year, um, and then I debuted in seventeen. What, so. what changed for you in, in, in essence of, of pitch usage? Because you threw a lot of sinker sinkers in twenty twenty two. Now this year, even though you're throwing Elevated. it from here, there's a lot of elevations yeah. of four seams. Like what, what is that, or how did that come about? So last year, basically twenty one, I was throwing all four seams, and I was giving up homers. Uh, really, I wasn't getting soft contact. And then 22, I realized, you know, my sinker is going to play. And so I started throwing that. This year, I'm kind of throwing both. Uh, it's kind of just like a hybrid of both, uh, depending on left-handed, right-handed. Um, some guys are better, like, it's better to throw the four-seam up and in or the two-seam front door. Um, I'm just kind of mixing and matching, and kind of I found, like, a formula that works for me. How much year. fun is that bullpen, especially when you have a dude like Williams back there? Oh, oh it's a lot of fun. I mean... Everybody in our bullpen throws 100 or a seven Williams. So I, mean, <laughs> I always wondered, like, it's the one spot I never got to hang out in. What are you right. doing? Like, take me through your routine. Are you hanging with the same guys? Are you kidding around? Because I always felt like, man, how can you guys relax out there? And then sixth inning hits. Phone and rings. And you're thrust into the most pressurized situation. I always felt like it was unfair. So, like, take us through your preparation leading into an appearance. Um, so, for me... Uh, I start moving around fourth or fifth inning because um, I know I'm typically going to be, I don't know, sixth inning or later. And I, I got some stretch stuff I do. I move around, get the blood flowing. Um, and I've, we've already done our homework. Uh, we don't, we're not out there, like, thinking about batters and whatnot. We've, mm. we've done that prior to batting practice or something like that yeah. the first day. Um, but I'm really just trying to get my body ready. I'm um, trying to not think a whole lot because once you start thinking, then then you get some negative thoughts in there, and then mm -hmm. you might start sweating a little bit. So <laughs> um, I try and focus on just actually my body, get my body ready, and then last second before I go in, we're getting some scouting report stuff from our pitching coach. Um, yeah, and then you go out and you got the, the next three hitters fresh on your mind and just go execute pitches. You mentioned um... – the pitch usage and discovering the arm slot. Uh, the Brewers organization has done a, such a good job at developing pitchers. What can you tell fans about what is in the secret sauce there in Milwaukee about <laughs> developing pitching? What is it that they're telling you guys that you're able to apply out on the field? So for me, I mean, when I showed up in Milwaukee, I, I was a fringy big leaguer, didn't have a, lot, a whole lot of success. And I think that they've just helped me find the right formula. Like, they, I mean, they stuck with me when I wasn't doing great. And they, they were like, you know what? I think we ought to kind of move in this direction with your pitch usage. I think we need to, like, tweak this pitch a little bit. And it might not be, like, major things, but yeah. it's, it's just finding the right things.
Uh, we have an at bat, uh, you versus Bryce Harper, uh, back in July. Um, and it was an unusual at bat because uh, he did not swing the bat. What do you recall ab about this particular matchup against Bryce? So as I'm watching this at bat, <laughs> What is After going the on? Pitch, I realize I think he's taken the whole at bat, and so I try to throw that one right down the middle, miss. And now I'm just I'm just aiming middle the rest of the at bat because with him standing like that, I realize you know if I'd rather give up a game tying homer or go ahead homer than walk him in this situation just for for that's crazy. The, way I mean, we're at, the like, only I, thing <laughs> I could think playing with Bryce, he's saying I am I am not. He was just coming back, right, grinding into finding his rhythm at the plate, and you're going to throw it into no man. a tizzy. Yeah. It was like when I faced Tim Wakefield. I'm like, no, I, no, I don't want to even face this because it's going to ruin me for a couple days. So he just <laughs> sat up there and probably took off you instead of worrying about that arm slot. Yeah, and I think – it got him to 3-1, the, the the kind of statue look. It got him to 3-1, so I think he was like, I'm just going to stick with it because I think it can get me to 4. So, I'm, I mean, it has worked in the past. Some <laughs> other guys have done that, not just not so blatantly, you know. They just kind of stand up there and they, they give like a courtesy courtesy load. Um, and those guys kind of got me every once in a while. I, I, got, I got one, I guess two questions in one, but talk to me about the importance of Contreras, how, how special he's been for you guys because I – I look at this dude, and, and I remember seeing him in Atlanta as a prospect, and I said, ooh, this guy's better than his brother. That's what I thought. But two is, is his framing ability, you know, your heat zones and, and where you go in certain counts, in certain situations. How important has that been for, for I guess, in all for you? Uh, it, I mean, it's been huge for the whole staff, but I'll say one of my least favorite things whenever a catcher's catching you is you throw a borderline pitch and they, like, give up on it. He never gives up on it. He always like he's always trying to frame that borderline pitch, um, and that's just kind of our catching mentality. You know, frame the borderline pitch, and we get a lot. I get a lot of pitches out of the zone thanks to him, and um, and I honestly don't even shake anymore. Pretty much, I, I was shaking at the beginning of the wow. year. Wow, a and, young guy like that. Yeah, I mean, he's he's learned my arsenal. He's he's learned wow. um, like my matchups versus guys and what works best. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll shake every once in a while, but. Most of the time, I, I trust what he's putting down there. You went real quick. You went to UT before we get into the one big leaguer who. Uh, you went to UT. You feel comfortable this weekend? <laughs> Alabama? I, I, is Texas back again? We're going to find out if Steve Sarkeesian's back, yeah, right? Tough got to take on Alabama in Tuscaloosa. I mean, last year was you were close. Was close. It was it was a heartbreaker. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if it's a heartbreaker because we weren't expected to win, but – Getting that close was like we were right there. Yeah, you could taste oh. it. I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but I mean, don't sleep on Texas baseball. That's right. Hey. Yeah. And a lot more matchups with uh, with Alabama in the near future as Texas moves to the SEC.